Um, I, I love that you have the. the, the you created that. them. That's why I know. I wore that's it. the. That's this, the. the that's not it. true. It's not true. But there's an <laughs> online rumor that I created the minions. That was started by a friend of mine, who knows I did not create the minions. No, a, your your TikToks. <laughs> every day I get a different one from somebody as the best things. And this yeah. is one of my favorite jokes. Yeah. Um, Twenty plus years ago, did you guys think that you would? be at New York Comic Con talking about Phineas and Ferb? I wrote down on a little sticky note uh, that 20 years from now we would be at Comic Con talking about the uh, the reboot. Uh, and then I he lost, lost it the, yeah. before oh, he so, could show it to any of us. So, so we I have can't no prove proof. it. But, but uh, yeah, we know. Yes. How excited are you guys to come back and revisit the characters that have now affected two generations? Three generations yeah. almost? Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. We, we have you know we've always loved these guys and and, and it's you know there's so, so much a part of our psyche that's uh, that every time they give us a chance to do more we did, you know like we did the the crossover with Milo Murphy's Law we did the, the the movie in 2020 the Canvas Against the Universe for the and so we've been dipping our, our our feet back in periodically and it always feels like coming home because it, it, it's just, you know, we, we, we did so much of our life was doing that show. So. Those guys have been very good to us in, in many, many ways. Yeah, um, yeah I think uh, <laughs> yeah, Phineas and Ferb are good for our souls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, as a fan, the Phineas and Ferb are good for my soul. Like, COVID time, I was binging on Disney Plus, just yeah. watching the episodes over again. I think that's why, I, I think the, the the pandemic is a lot of why it's uh, like the, res, the the resurgence of the popularity and it sort of brought about the, this new, uh, these new seasons. I think a lot of it was like people, you know, being locked inside and saying, what, what's my comfort show? What's, what, what show reminds me of my childhood, you know, or my, or my kid's childhood? Yeah. I you love know. I love now people who grew up with it are are just getting to the point where they're passing it on to their children. Yeah, and they said yeah, I've heard from more than a few people. So it's really great to sit and watch it again with my kids and watch them get it, feel the way about it that that I felt. Simpsons and Phineas and Ferb are kind of on the same level as the effect of, for the world almost. Yeah. And we've worked on both those shows. Yes, yeah. which is and we met on Simpsons. I feel like, like, like the biggest effect we had on the world is that there is now, for the first time in human history, an entire generation of people who know what an aglet is. Yes. I still <laughs> sing that song, so, too. So we killed that joke. What joke? The, the joke. one, I mean, you know, about not knowing what an aglet is. Yeah, because that used to be the thing. It's like, there's this thing on the end of a shoelace and everybody uses it and nobody knows what it's called. And now everybody knows now what Now they it's all know. Called. What is the mindset change going into the new episodes? Like, again, it's been quite a few we're, years since the last reel. We're doing it pretty much the way we did it before as far as, you know, just, just you know, look, we're not trying to reinvent that wheel at all. We're just trying to make more of that wheel uh, because cause I just feel like it, it's, it's, it's a show that, that, you know, has a very specific space in the hearts of, uh, of a whole generation and, and, and we, we don't want to mess with that in any real way. I mean, the, we do get the opportunity at this stage because it is so well established that we can push and play a little bit more with the format. We certainly, there's you know, there's things that we might not have been able to do the first time we were making where you think, you know, at this time we could, and not that we're doing it, but you could do a whole episode about Klimpaloon and we have kind of a little bit more freedom yeah. to veer which is, is fun. Yeah. And the music is probably Aglet. Um, yeah. You know, Squirrels in My Pants is still on a playlist everywhere. Yeah, they're all trending on, uh, yeah. on TikTok all the time. <laughs> well, you oh, promote look, it. Lizzo so. is lip syncing yeah. to, to Squirrels in My Pants <laughs> on stage. Uh, how long does it take for the process for the song to come about? Is it is it the song first or is it the story first? It, it's usually the story first because because then we know like and where would the song go in this? How about, how about we do a song about this and we'll put, do a montage there? We'll do a musical number there or something. And it and it takes us about an hour to write a song uh, about anything because we've just done it so much yeah. at, at this practically point. any style. And, 
and you know I always feel like that's the right amount of time to spend on a, on a song if you you know yeah. I said something on TikTok once where, where I've seen so many great uh, versions of Busted on mm -hmm. online and, and it was like you know when we wrote that song 20 years ago it took us like 45 minutes if I'd known how long it was going to stay in people's hearts and minds, we might have worked on it lo longer, but it might have not might yeah. not have been as good. I think that's <laughs> the like... danger. I think one of the the things that is good about our process is just because of our schedule, somebody takes it away from you pretty quickly, and it doesn't give you the chance to over massage it or over fuss it or overthinking yeah. it or question or doubt yourself. You don't live with it long enough for yeah. all of that doubt to creep in. So there's this. If there's a rewrite on the song, and weirdness. And, yeah, if there's a rewrite on the song, it's something I've done on the drive home, yeah. or the drive back yeah. in the next day, and then it's the next the, the next day is like, hey, what if we do a bridge that goes like that or something like that? Yeah. But most of the time, we don't rewrite it at all. It's it's just like the first thing out of your head is often the best idea. So, and the, it is. Yeah. Yeah. The imperfections and the weirdness and the oddities and stuff that tends to be the stuff that you remember or that makes you laugh. How did Richard O'Brien get involved in this? Because I'm a huge Rocky Horror fan. I did because Rocky in Santa Monica huge, for years. So We're a huge Rocky. You are? Rock, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I exactly. was on the, Good man. the yes. cast. I was Probably doing... Saw you there. Who were you in the... I did tech most. Yeah. I always okay, sat behind yeah. so I could yeah. enjoy everything. Yeah. yeah. So we uh, uh, we were also Rocky Horror exactly. fans. And uh, and so... Mm. Uh, so Swampy well, knew I, Richard. I threw a weird thing. My, my family... My wife and her family were involved at the Rocky Horror Show. Weird set of circumstances. Um, and I had auditioned him as a voice for a show that I was doing in England many years ago. And when we started talking about it, I still could hear his voice and just thought that would just be weird and fun and wonderful. So I made a few phone calls and got him to audition. And I found out years later from his daughter, he was sure he was wrong for the role. <laughs> was really just in doing the audition to get it out of the way because clearly they weren't going to choose him and then carried that doubt about his rightness for the role through the entire run of the show yeah, kept he was sure he was every time fired. he came in this would be the time when we'd go no we realized you're wrong for it the hardest one to cast was phineas yeah phineas we we actually we actually hired somebody to do it thought it would work and then it didn't work it just didn't work with the, with the visuals so it was mm -hmm. like this isn't yeah. working right we have to recast and then we were down to like we, were, we had to finish the pilot and uh and we had like we were down to two people and we recorded them both doing the whole thing so that if one didn't work we could use the other because we didn't have time to audition them and then uh -huh. This is the side. We recorded one guy for the for the whole day, and uh, and then the next the next day Vincent came in and, and we got the first guy done. Okay, good, good. He will work. We're putting it to the visuals. It works just fine. And then Vincent came in the next day and did it, and we were like, oh, this other guy just lost that, this gig. And he was like like two no two two lines in. We were like, oh, he's just the, he just the line it to me that completely changed everything was when the guy says, aren't you a little too young to be uh, roller coaster engineers? And he says, yes, yes, I am. And the, the way Vincent said it, it was so pure, so positive, and like, oh, thank it you for like noticing. It wasn't smarmy or anything. And like, when yeah, any, anybody else had said it, there was always a hint of like, yeah, what's it to you, Jerry? Uh -huh. Yeah. And it was just that yeah. absolute innocence and joy and that yeah. is it.